Okay, so this is lesson 3-2, which is linear functions. Our essential question is, how can you identify a linear function? So example one says, how can you represent a function rule? So you can see here, this is our function machine. So x goes into the function, and then you have some sort of function for every function machine. <laughs> and f of x um, comes out, so that is your output. So you have your input of x, you have your output of f of x. So this situation would be modeled, it also says how can you model the situation of y equals fx, or sorry, y equals 5x plus 1. So the way we would model that with function notation is to say f of x equals 5x plus 1. So you can actually interchange y and f of x. And f of x is more useful to us. Function notation is going to be used a lot when you get into algebra 2 and higher level math classes. So yes, there's a reason why we're changing it from y to f of x because um, it's going to be useful later. Okay, and then it says, what's the value of g of x equals 5x plus 1 when x equals 3? So you'll notice here we have f of x, here we have g of x. You might see h of x, you might see k of x. Um, you can use different letters to represent functions. So when it's asking us when x equals 3, that means 3 is our input. So it's going to go in for the x into our function. So we would write this as g of 3 equals 5 times 3 plus 1. So what that means is that g of 3, that's how I say that, equals 15 plus 1, which is 16. So the value of g of x equals 5x plus 1 when x is 3 is 16. Now, sometimes people get confused and they say, oh, that's g times 3, and we have to, no, you're done on this side. This side, that's a notation, and it just means that I plugged 3 into the function and I got 16 out of the function. Okay, our next example says the cost to make four bracelets is shown in the table. How can you determine the cost to make any number of bracelets? So what we want to do is we want to write a function for this situation. So I'm going to use two different colors here. Let's use, so red is going to be our change in y. So this is our y value. So if I go from 7 to 32, I'm going up 15. If I go from 32 to 47, I'm going up 15. And if I go from 47 to 62, I'm going up 15. So then let's change it to blue. So I'm going to make our domain, our x value, our change in x, blue. So going from 1 to 2, I went up 1, 2 to 3, up 1, 3 to 4, up 1. Okay. So if I want to find the slope, because what I'm thinking of right now is I'm thinking of kind of like y equals mx plus b, I'm thinking f of x equals mx plus b, where I need to find the m and the b. Okay? So m is change in y over change in x. So if I look at this, 15 is my change in y and 1 is my change in x, which means m would be 15 over 1, which is 15. Now b, we have to think a little bit more creatively. So b is my y-intercept. So b is y-intercept. And our y-intercept occurs when x is 0. So if we go back a step to 0, what would we get when we go back a step in our y's? So we would think, okay, if I go back 15 from 17, I'm going to end up at 2, which means that my y-intercept is at 2. So my function would be f of x equals 15 is my m value, x plus 2. So there's my function. So our last example is to analyze a linear function. So it says... Tamika records the outside temperature at 6 a.m. The temperature increases by 2 degrees every hour for the next 6 hours. 
If the temperature continues to increase at the same rate, what will the temperature be at 2 p.m.? Okay, so if we look here, our picture shows that at 6 a.m., the temperature is negative 3 degrees Fahrenheit. So we know that's our starting point. Okay, so again, we're trying to write our function f of x equals mx plus b. So what we just found is we found b. We found our starting value. Okay, we found at zero time um, the temperature is negative 3. But then we also need to figure out what's the rate. So the rate, it tells us in the problem, it says that temperature increases by 2 degrees every hour. So that means 2 is our rate. So this would be f of x equals 2x minus 3. So then it says, what would the temperature be at 2 p.m.? So if we start at 6 a.m. and we count forward to 2 p.m., that would be a total of 8 hours. So that means that we're going to plug 8 into our function. So we're going to find f of 8 which would be 2 times 8 minus 3. So that would be 16 minus 3, so that would be 13 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, the other thing I want to show you before we're done with this problem is what if I said, what if I asked a different question? What if I said, when... Will it be 19 degrees Fahrenheit? So what we would do here is now we're plugging this in for our output. We want to know when our output is 19. So that means I would replace f of x here with 19 and say 2x minus 3. So if I was doing that, I would then solve my equation. I'd add 3 to both sides. So if I add 3 to 19, I get 22 equals 2x divided by 2, and I get 11. So that would mean 11 hours after 6 a.m., or that would be 5 p.m. So you can actually solve these both ways, either plugging in a value for x or plugging in a value for f of x.